Right. Uh, without no further ado, we're going to be moving to the next presentation. So I'd like to invite uh, Brendan on stage. Let's see if we can have him. Hello, Hello. Brendan. How are, you? How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Where are you? Where are you connecting from? I'm in uh, Dallas, Texas area. Oh, okay. I don't live that far from there. I'm actually living in Austin. Uh, is that oh, super okay. hot as it is right now? Yeah, hot and humid. Yeah, yeah, same thing here. All right, so Brendan, um, he works at Software AG and uh, he's gonna be talking about, you know, what are the key points for about, you know, anything that an API architect or something like that um, should be keeping in mind with writing um, API project. And more importantly, you can see that, that he claims that those keys will turn yourself into job promotion. And so API days is gonna be like, if, if it's not happening, uh, <laughs> you'll get a refund. You and get we'll redirect, yeah, we'll redirect the people, all of them to you. So you all right. you better be doing good here. All right, without <laughs> ado, the stage is yours and people enjoy the presentation. All right. All right, um, as I said, my name is Brenton House. I'm a digital evangelist with Software AG. My background has been in APIs for some 25 plus years now in development, architecture, and evangelist roles. So how do you turn APIs into a job promotion? If you're here because you're curious and you're not really seeing any connection between APIs and job promotions, follow me as we go a little deeper into the world of APIs. Okay, not that deep. Now, I could have 139 slides like this and try and fill your heads up with facts and figures, but this is not about me. This is not about what I have to say or even what I know. This is about you. My role as evangelist is to amplify the work that people like you are doing and to partner with you to ensure that you are equipped with the knowledge and tools that you need to be great at your job. So say you get called into your boss's office and you need to explain APIs and why your organization should spend X number of dollars on them. Now, you can replace boss with coworker and APIs with an assortment of API-related technologies. The point is that you need to be a great storyteller that can effectively communicate the value of APIs to your organization. Now, I'm not gonna be able to give you everything you need to know today. <laughs> what you will walk away with is what the essential concepts are, how to best talk about them, and where to learn more. So I'm gonna give you 10 key concepts that as developers and architects, you need to be so familiar with that you can effectively communicate any of these to a coworker, boss, or executive at your organization. Now, I will warn you that you'll probably find about as many definitions for some of these topics as there are experts willing to give their opinion. Take what I give you today, use it to learn more, and then do something good for your organization. So without further ado, I give you the 10 things. First up, digital transformation. Now, this is not about going paperless or making every product digital or replacing everybody's job with robots. Digital transformation is really about people. It's about the people that work with you it's about the people that work for you. It's about the people that partner with you. It's about the people that buy from you. It's about the products that you create. And it's about leveraging new and existing technologies to ensure that your organization's future success, and it's all about doing the right things. So now 2020 forced a lot of organizations to accelerate their digital transformation plans, but there's still a lot of work to do and some course corrections that need to be made as a result of some quick decisions that had to be made. Next up is API first. Now API first once referred to planning, designing and developing your APIs and interfaces before building the clients that use those APIs. But now it encompasses so much more than that. API first is about adapting to a mindset where they're your products are capabilities that you can deliver. So stop thinking about it as adding APIs onto your products 
and start viewing your business as a set of API products that work together to provide you the features, data, and capability that your organization's products produce. Now think about UPS, FedEx, and DHL. Their business is shipping packages. But how competitive do you think these companies would be if their partners, customers, vendors, and even their own organizations did not have access to APIs to create, track, monitor, and interact with the complete supply chain? Number three is the API economy. Now, the API economy is about providing access to your organization's products and features using APIs and microservices to make your products more accessible. Now, if you're thinking that this sounds a lot like API first, then you would be correct. If API first is the mindset and methodology applied to an organization, then API economy is looking at this at a more global level and seeing the big picture of how these API first companies and products are interacting and creating an economy of APIs. Now, some software as a service or SaaS offerings can be a great example of one organization's API first platform being implemented and then interacting with other organizations within the API economy. Number four is understanding the business value of APIs. Not only do you have to be able to understand this, but you have to be able to communicate it. Even if you are in a super technical role, you still have to take the time to understand your business and how it flows. This will help you translate the benefits of API management, API security, API integrations and microservices into the language necessary to convey the benefits and bottom line value that API platforms provide. Another thing you can do is take the analytics that are available to you from your API management platform to create some dashboards to be able to visualize the value that is backed up by measurements and metrics captured through the API program. Number five, we have APIs as a product and products as an API. While you may be monetizing your APIs or selling them in one way or another, API as a product is actually bigger than this. What we're talking about here is MVPs, user experience, marketing, customer satisfaction. Your APIs need product management. And yes, I'm aware that there may be a reluctance to do this on both ends. On one side, your development teams may resist what they see as more red tape. On the management side, this can look like more resources and money that's required. Look at the priority and the resources that, you're, that your company is giving other products and give your APIs the same attention. APIs are not a once and done kind of project. Giving your APIs proper product management will ensure that your customers and users have the greatest possible user experience. Now, products as an API is simply a way of saying that if your product doesn't have an API, it doesn't exist in the digital world. APIs are the way that people, apps, websites, and other APIs use your product. Nobody wants to be left behind. Understanding both of these, they're both essential in helping you grow your company's revenue. So number six is microservices and how to manage them. Containerization has changed the landscape of services and APIs in many organizations. And they've already started making, a lot of them have already started making the migration from monoliths to microservices. It's important for you to have an understanding of the pros and cons to containerizing your APIs, but it's also important that you know how to manage, protect, and scale your APIs once they are deployed. Research some terms like app mesh and service mesh if you want to learn more about some of the governance that is involved here. Number seven is API integrations. Your API may be the best thing since sliced bread, but you will most likely need to integrate with other APIs and services. While you can handcraft these integrations, you might want to look into saving yourself a lot of time and effort by using integration tools that have proven themselves over time. There are tools with free forever tiers like webmethods.io that allows you to integrate, that allows you to create integration projects easily 
and then integrate with some or all of your APIs that you need to test. Plus, you can then scale when you need to. Number eight is API security. Now, this really should be number one on the list. Not only do you need to understand the risk, best practices, standards, technologies, and solutions around API security, you also need to be able to communicate security effectively to your organization. Focusing too much on any one part of API security can convey an incomplete message that could lead to less than desirable decisions and consequences at your organization. API security is one area where if you do not already have a good understanding of this topic, I would make it a top priority to learn. Number nine is API management. Yep, as the number of internal, external, and third-party APIs grows, it can quickly become a nightmare if you're not prepared. API management is an essential part of the bigger API picture. Being able to convey the benefits, risks, best practices to upper management will give them the confidence to make decisions needed to ensure that your organization provides capabilities that delight your customers and users and make your business successful. Now to explain what API management is, we just need one word, Flapham. I mean, where would we be without Flapham? This is so self-explanatory, I really don't think I have to say much more about this, right? Well, if it sounds like someone's just starting to make up words now, you are probably right. Flapham is actually full lifecycle API management. And no, not that kind of cycle. This kind of cycle. This is everything about an API, from planning, designing, developing, testing, versioning, deploying, securing, monitoring, and even retiring. Now, this is the same kind of stuff you've seen a lot um, over and over before with your other development products but now with a fancy new name. Now, I know some of this can seem kind of silly, but being able to explain topics like this using alternate terminology might help some people in your organization be able to see how this relates to your business and their bottom line. And number 10 is API maturity. API maturity is a way to gauge how your organization is doing on its API journey. It incorporates a lot of what we've already talked about, like how, do you, how developed is your API strategy? Do you have a well-defined lifecycle for your APIs? Are you implementing API best practices? What, are the, what is the developer experience for your API platform? Are you leveraging API automation? How mature is your API architecture? Are you utilizing API metrics, analytics, and reporting? And a lot of other factors go in, involved in this. API maturity is a term that you not only need to understand what it means, but it is also important that you understand how to use it and that you actually use it to gauge the API maturity of your organization and API programs. Now, this can help you in conversations and knowing what decisions need to be made first as you progress towards a successful API program. Now, if you're interested in getting a custom report on the API maturity of your organization, you can take a free API maturity assessment at softwareag.com forward slash API dash maturity. In addition to the 10 concepts that we've already talked about, use this information to learn more about being the API champion that your organization needs. But this is not about you being the knight in shining armor who swoops in to save the day. This is about you being a trusted advisor, a mentor, an evangelist, and most importantly, a good listener. This is about you being able to leverage your knowledge and experience so that you can communicate it in a way that benefits your entire organization. It's not easy and it does take time. But if you continue in the cycle of learning, sharing, and making smart decisions, 
your organization will find that the value added is you. So can you really turn APIs into a job promotion? Very possibly. Start by bridging that communication gap and then work to be the API champion that your organization needs. Use what you learned about the ten, these 10 concepts and become a master storyteller so that you can captivate your audience with a story about your organization's success and the role APIs are going to play in the exciting next chapter of their journey. So we've covered what the essentials are and uh, how to talk, uh, best talk about them. The last part we have is where to learn more. Now there's a lot of great resources out there, but one I wanted to highlight is a brand new learning portal that we have at knowledge.softwareag.com. Now, of course, you can always visit my site at brenton.house where I post articles and link to other resources. Now, if you prefer video, we have a ton of great videos that you can find on the Software AG YouTube channel, as well as my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Brenton House. Also, keep your eyes peeled for a brand new YouTube series that's coming very soon where you can learn a lot about APIs in a very short amount of time. Well, I'm Brenton House. Connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channels to learn more about better equipping yourself on your API first journey. And thank you very much, all of you, for attending. And I believe at this time we have a few minutes to take a couple questions. Sorry, I can't hear you. I think you're muted. Yeah, so, sorry, sorry about oh, it. Okay. Well, yeah, my fault. Well, first of all, thank you for the talk. And the question we have for you is that, um, in particular with small companies, uh, although like they have all the good intentions of right, or trying to set up an API strategy, they have a different set of concerns like funding and limited runaway. And so they crumble the software to, you know, in the quick, quickest possible way. And so I, the question for you, like, do you think there is a size kind of a minimal size of a company where it will actually make sense. And before that, probably don't care about it that much because that's not exactly your, it should not really be your primary focus. To be honest, I, I think that any size company can take the API first because it is a mindset. It doesn't require you to do a whole lot of work. Now, some big organizations are gonna have more work because of the size of the company. However, a small company, if you go into it, looking at it from the point of view as, of an API, and you see that the API is a product and you see the APIs are taking your existing products, even the, the products that you haven't developed yet, maybe they're products you have, maybe they're products that are future products, but it, just taking that mindset to view those things, it will change how you develop your strategy as a company and for your development. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. So let's say the lesson for people out there is take an additional date to think about it, and then you probably have a better understanding of what's going on. That's totally fair. All right, Brenton, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, for all the people here, um, you have his references, and it's going to be hanging around um, in our different uh, post-event activities. So thank you very much, Brenton. All right, thank you. Goodbye now. Bye.